Hey guys, we're back with the Eden of Josiah. Uh, where it. They're like, okay, we're gonna save Yuji. Then in the last episode, we're like, okay, we're gonna really save Yuji. And it's just kinda going off that. We wanted to play Valhalla, but I mean, you gotta play Josiah. Josiah. It's not like I don't wanna play Josiah. Because, well. No. Like, I, I have fun playing it, but it always feels like, you know. A bother to like you know just start. Does that make sense? Yeah, we stopped in the middle of the scene. We're gonna get rich with ten dollars. Well, I think that's more like nine dollars, but. では、小宮さち、あなたはそのお金で印鑑を持って銀行に行きましょう。銀行ならどこでもよろしいですか？グローバルネットバンキングに対応しているところがいいわね。商品系列は避けたいから、NFUJ銀行の日本橋支店にあ
でも日本ではなぜか人気が高くて米マデル社は日本限定で同モデルの販売を行ったアメリカでは販売されなかったというだけでもちろんそれを欲しがるマニアはアメリカにもいる So, what are the guys of Mackie and I are just buying that? The first thing is that 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 the カリビーバックだ。ちゃんとバッグに詰め込んできたのよ。これ。このミニカーが14万円。近所のスーパーのレジ横で買ったミニカーが14万円になるからくりが理解できたのなら早速出勤しましょう。まずは3ヶ月間
私は人に嫌われることにも首をもただのヘタルで弱虫だからこそ他者との強制関係を形成しなければ生きてはいけない It still bugs me though just because it clearly contradicts with what, what happens in the fruit of Isaiah そのくせ他者に対する警戒心が強いから他者からの愛情や施しを信用していないんだけどまあ当たってるよね優しくされるのなんかまだ苦手だしだから私は未だに人格が統合しないし勇士がいなくちゃ寂しくて死んじゃいそうになるやっぱり一番面倒な駒はあなたねうんごめんでも何かに使ってくれると嬉しいかな心配しなくてもちゃんと出番は用意してあるわ今はまだどうなるかわからないから何とも言えないけれどもしかしたらあなたが一番過酷な仕事を引き受けることになるかもしれないわね何も考えずに言われたことだけやってればいいって感じの仕事なら楽でいいかなええそしてそれを世間では過酷な仕事というのよまあそん時は頑張るよいい子ねああ、私がいい。俺、ユージだ。あ、そう。15分経ったら、ブレッドリューは良かった、でも、良かったのは良かったのは良かったのは良かったのは良かったのは良かったのは良かったのは良かったのは良かったのは良かったのは良かったのは良かったのは良かったのは良かったのは良かったのは良かったのは良かったのは良かったのは良かったのは良かったのは良かったのは良かったのは良かったのは良かったのは良かったのは良かったのは She could be in multiple places simultaneously. The situation called for it. At any given moment, Kazuki might be watching a street corner, spilling a public facility, or using a webcam to speak inside a private home. Basically, couldn't turn around without bumping into her. Of course, the idea of an invisible army of Kazuki's lurking all over the place was somewhat unsettling. But she'd always been something of a god to Yuji, so the idea of her always watching over him almost seemed like a natural development. When you're locked up in a cell all day against your will, you tend to have a good deal of time on your hands. Siblings who, siblings who haven't seen each other in years always have plenty of catching up to do. In particular, Kasuki was very interested in hearing about how her brother had gotten hurt by following her abrupt disappearance. Life after you disappeared was, well, pretty much how I described it in those documents. Now that I think about it, I guess this explains why they ordered me to write such a detailed report. You're behind, behind that, weren't you? Never changed, Kasuki. Back when we were kids, you used to interrogate me about my day the minute I got home from school. あなたが私の預かり知らないところで私の知らない女のこと人には言えないようなことをするからでしょう。あ、oh, yeah, he he <laughs> 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 ここは私が言うと、私が私が言うと、私が言うと、私が言うと、私が言うと、私が言堀内かなでとは結婚式ごっこと称した時期で妻が許したわよね。Thanks anyway, but I don't, really, I don't think so. Look, forget about me. Why do you not know about this, Kazuki? You were in an accident on the way back from your training camp and got stranded in the mountains. Only Amane survived in the end. Amane told me what happened from her perspective, but I don't know much about a part of that. So, 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 Oh, flashback? Oh, we, uh. Oh, what was the name of the flashback? Like, something heaven? Heaven's. something? Angels? Reverie? Reverie is a cool word. Or something like that. So, the night of our escape attempt, after convincing Amani to run off by herself, I was easily pinned to the ground by Kaneda Senpai, who had pursued us through the woods. Struggling my body, she pressed me into the dirt. The night Can Canada, Canada <laughs> focused her attention on my right hand, showed the knife had taken from Amane. She pushed down on my right arm with an unbelievable amount of force, while Quaid, in play, immobilized my fractured left arm. <laughs> she had the eyes of a starving dog. The smile on her face was a twisted, hollow thing. The corners of her mouth grew wet with frothy spittle. The mom of Francis, Canada, was now covered entirely by her impulses. Jenna decided to catch me. I was running, so she instinctively gave me chase. Poor Yitsu, for her part, was clearly terrified. 
You go too accustomed to being ordered around, you lose the ability to take independent action. As you stay in line and cooperate with the group, there's always a risk that they'll turn on you next. That fear is probably what made Cords and I act more than anything else. One of my captors was incapable of coherent in thought. The other was a coward who couldn't bring yourself to ignore a crossing signal. It caught me, but that didn't mean they were going to do anything to me. Not just yet, anyway. A few seconds had passed. While they had me at their mercy, they obviously weren't sure what to do with me. One of them was governed by instinct, the other by fear. Under those circumstances, fear would be easier to manipulate. I turned my head towards Koi, who was holding my left arm. <laughs> Keeping my voice utterly calm, I addressed her in a low, menacing tone. <laughs> Once you've learned to fear somebody, or someone, that fear tends to stick with you. Do you feel Koi to you? How do you say her name? Did you say Koide? Koide, okay. Really a grip breaking slightly. <laughs> Words right and wrong held no meaning here. No one knew who to obey, no one knew what to do. This valley, the law of the jungle, was in full effect. Brute strength was all that counted now, but even so, Koya Yatsu was afraid of me. My arm was fractured, I sank face down in the dirt, and really helpless. But even so, the idea of antagonizing me terrified her. A terrestrial woman could be far more threatening than a physically powerful one. Koya Senpai had spent too much time being pushed around by other people. Her terror of me wasn't natural. Imagine it came to her reflexively. But at least speaking, Koya Senpai's name was enough to feel her fear. Part of her mind is screaming to apologize now, but she still has a chance. The next words out of my mouth would be decisive. Koide Senpai had spent most of her young life standing submiss submissively at the sight of strong people. Over the years, she'd internalized certain rules. The way I was treated her set off alarm bells inside her head. Her instincts were telling her not to defy me. Before she even knew it, knew it Koide Senpai had jerked her hands away from her, my left arm. I didn't let the chains pass by me. With all my strength, I swung my partially fractured arm up, punching Cana Canada square up on the nose. <laughs> this is a reenactment of the War of 1812. Canada reached up to stop the blood now flowing from her nose, she tried to push her off me. But it wasn't as if I had much strength left. More importantly, I just hit her as hard as I could with my injured arm. It hurt so badly I wanted to cry. In rage for the pain I had inflicted on her, Canada, Senpai, leveled my name furiously. Now that I had angered her, she'd probably kill me without a second thought. If I wept and apologized, would she forgive me? It didn't seem particularly likely. I tried to lay a bit of groundwork for when the worst came to worst, but honestly, I feel like my luck had simply run out. Just as I was beginning to resign myself to fate, Another one of my pursuers arrived on the scene. Sakuma had emerged silently from the darkness behind Canada. None of us noticed her approach. I don't really remember any of these characters. But was she the one that, uh, Kept throwing the phone up to try to get the text message to send. I remember that scene. Nara, I, I mentioned I reread a bit of Versailles. Uh, I, did I read Yumi Kills Her Out? Read some of it. If not all of it. Uh, Sachis? I think I read Sachis. Michiru's? I definitely read Michiru's. But I, I think I kind of skipped through Amane's and didn't read Nakita's at all. But this was. When was this? year ago? Two years? Well, I read it two years ago, so probably a year ago. Taking a shaky step forward on her under Norish legs, Sakuma placed her hand on Canada's shoulders and, shoulder and pulled. Canada slowly turned her head to look up at her. Her right eye was all but useless. Her left glistened like a pool of oil. Facing it contorted itself into the slack, deranged smile of a woman who'd given up entirely on life. Do you not fall in low enough to kill living people in order to eat them? But she simply realized that most of my body would go to waste if she killed me now. 
Whatever the case, she clearly had to come to her senses. ね、風に。情けない話だけれど、私たちは君がいないと全員死んでしまうんだ。そのことを君は十分に分かっているし、そうなるように仕向けてきたんだと思うけど、こんな状況で空腹だな。治療不足だのといっても、そうにもならない。
Finally, in our juice, we managed to suppress thus far to no longer be controlled. What else could he do but laugh? Sakuma took a half step backwards. The knife in Captain Sakashita's hand slips cleanly from her stomach. It's blood drenched with blood. Blood poured steadily from the gash in Sakuma Senpai's abdomen. Like air escaping from a punctured balloon, strength drained from her body. That's it. Not gonna survive this one. The moment that realization hit her, Sakuma swayed heavily backwards. Having offered Sakashita her forgiveness, a beatific expression of relief spread across her face. She collapsed to the ground. <laughs> Jumping at the sound of my voice, Koide hurried to Sakuma's side. The wound was so large that she hesitated, not knowing what to do. With an angry shout at Canada Senpai, managed to shove her off of me and rushed over to where Sakuma had landed. Removing my broken arm from its sling, I slipped the cloth off my shoulder and brought it to Sakuma's injured abdomen. No matter how the pressure I applied, the blood wouldn't stop flowing. You know, these people are a lot more sane than I remember them being. And I say that as, you know, that girl just murdered her, you know. Captain Takashito was mumbling incoherently towards the bloody knife in her hand, but no one was paying her any heed. In the midst of this chaos, I heard someone approaching through the forest. Someone hear a white noise lit through the underbrush. Ibuki Harina appeared before us. He looked around the area with glass glassy eyes. Blood Sakuma lying in the grass and slowly squatted down next to her. Is this the girl or uh, Started going in. Was it like an iron deficiency or something? I'm getting a phone call. How far are we? Eh. I'll call it there, guys. See you guys next time. Bye.